Okay, so in this video we're going to play around with some data frames. Um, so I'm going to so when you're manipulating data, you want to work on columns, you want to work on rows, and you can do that in a visual spreadsheet manager like Excel, but R has a lot of capacities to look in on specific things in columns and, row and rows and do a bunch of advanced stuff. So we're going to talk about that in this video. Um, so if you don't know, R actually has some built-in data frames that you can play around with, like sample data sets. And the one we're going to be using in this video is Beaver 1. Now, if you type Beaver 1 into R, you will see that a bunch of data plops out. Uh, that's because this is a built-in uh, data frame that's in there. I'm pretty sure it's in every distribution of R um, and all operating systems. But uh, So it, it's here on mine, and I, it's all the other ones I've checked, it's there. Um, so let's play around with this thing. So let's first off say summary Beaver 1. Let's try and figure out what this is. I'll go ahead and tell you, actually move that up. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you that this is a bunch of measurements of body temperature taken from a beaver. Um, and there's also beaver 2, that's another beaver though. Um, so look at the kind of columns we have here. So we have day, we have time, we have the temperature, and we have this column active, which I'm, I'm pretty sure is if the beaver was active or not. I'm not 100% sure, but either way it doesn't matter for us now. Um, so if you want to look at if you only want to see the beginning part of a data frame, you can just type in head and then the, the data variable. Uh, or you can type in head equals, or head in equals like 15 if you want to see the first 15 uh, of the rows. Um, okay, so we have day, and this is presumably day of the year, so the 346th day of the year. I guess that's in December. Uh, we have the time that the temperature was taken, and then we have the temperature we actually got. Um, so notice the time here, if I do, um, let's say, if I do max beaver1 uh, time, that's going to give me uh, 2350. Uh, that's the maximum uh, of all the times we have. So we're on 24 hour time, just to be clear. Uh, and we have temperature in Celsius. Uh, so first off, I should explain what did I do here. So I did one of the first little things where you're, uh, when I'm ending up subsetting data. So what you can do is if, so this whole data frame is like a big Excel spreadsheet or big spreadsheet generally. Um, but if we want to talk about specifically one column or row, we can narrow in on them with the dollar sign. So if I say uh, beaver, uh, dollar sign time, or excuse me, beaver one dollar sign time, it's going to return all of the time values. And this is effectively in a vector and we can treat it like a vector. For example, we can say, uh, you know, beaver time plus, you know, 200 or something, and 200 is added to all of those. Now, of course, we're not actually adding to that in the data frame, we're just doing that real time, uh, you know, doing the calculation in R. Um, but so you can say beaver, oops, uh, you know, beaver one. Uh, temp or something like that if we want all the temperature values. Um, the other thing you can do is in the same way that you can call temperature or call columns, you can create columns. So let's say um, let's say we want to add in a new column and we want to call it uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say beaver1 legs. Um, so we're going to say that beaver1 legs is equal to 4. So what is that going to do? Now if we look at our data again, if we look at data uh, of beaver one, we're gonna see there's now a legs column and it has four in every single value. So here I've just added in one number. You could add in a vector of the same size and add, you know, add all that data in. But now we know that each time that the beaver was measured, uh, you know, each time we counted it or measured his temperature, he had four legs. That's very convenient. Now that's not gonna mean anything much, but this is how you add in different columns and you can add vectors or numbers or whatever. Okay, so let's start doing some, let's do some real manipulation of this data. Okay, so um, here we have the temperature column. Now the temperature column is in Celsius. Um, now I'm not big on Celsius just because I'm an American. I, I don't know, I find like Fahrenheit is so much more intuitive. So if you don't know how Fahrenheit works, here, here's what, how it works. Zero is really, really cold on a really, really cold day. A hundred is really, really hot on a really, really hot day. That's what Fahrenheit is. I don't know the Celsius stuff. I don't care if it's more logical. It's not for me. So I'm going to change temperature I'm going to change temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, so how am I going to do this? So we already know that beaver1 temp, this is a vector. Um, we also know that we can modify vectors by, you know, just sort of algebraically adding things to them or something like that. Um, so, and we also know that we can, like we did back with the leg thing, uh, we can actually create 
uh, different new columns or or actually replace columns by setting setting them equal to something else. So let's do something a little magical. Let's say beaver1 temp, and we're going to set that equal to something. Um, now what I'm going to do is make a little equation. So what's the equation for uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit? I'm pretty sure it is um, the Celsius, Celsius degrees times uh, 9 over 5 all of that plus uh, 32. Okay, so that's the equation. So what I'm going to say is beaver1 temp, I'm going to set that equal, actually, no, let's make a new column. We'll say um, F temp for Fahrenheit temperature or something like that. That's going to be equal to beaver1 temp, um, yeah, times 9 over 5, and I put this all in parentheses so the order of operations works out. I think it would anyway in this situation, but um, so beaver1 temp times 9 over 5 plus 32. Now, if I run this, I hope that works. Let's look at uh, beaver1 F temp. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, oh, those look like good uh, body temperatures. So, uh, oh, and body temperature in Fahrenheit, just a little under 100. If you have 100, you might be close to get having, you know, some kind of uh, flu or something, um, or fever. Um, so here we go. Here are all of our uh, body temps in Fahrenheit. Now we can run beaver1 again, and we'll see that we now have a column of Fahrenheit body temperatures. Um, now keep in mind, this is this is a super easy thing to do. It's the equivalent of like in Excel, when you have one of those things, uh, when you have like equals and then sum, you know, times whatever. Uh, but we can do this sort of on the fly in R. Now I just as well could have said, now back, back here I said that uh, uh, beaver F temp is equal to this. I could have also just said temp. And what that would have done is rewritten the temperature uh, column with this. But I, I think I want to have both Celsius and uh, uh, Fahrenheit. Um, so what else can we do to this data? Uh, let's do something more fancy. Um, so here, as I said before, we have time, and we have time in 24-hour time. So let's say hypothetically, this isn't really a good idea, but so let's say hypothetically you want to have that time in 12-hour time. Um, so how would we go about doing that? In R we can do it pretty quickly, but how, just think about it programmatically. So if you were in a normal computing language that didn't have all this fancy uh, vector arithmetic or whatever, uh, you would probably have to have some kind of loop that goes through here and decides, um, you know, which one of the temperature, or excuse me, the time values is, over, is 1300 or over, because at that point, 12 hour time is gonna roll over, 24 time isn't. So all of these values, right, uh, we would take those values and subtract 1,200 from them, and that would give us 12-hour times. So how do we do this in R? Um, so R has this really cool function called uh, if-else. Um, so what if-else is, is right here, is you give it some kind of test for it to do, um, and then it returns, it, it, you give it three arguments, one is the test, one is what it returns if the test is true. One is what it returns if the test is false. Now, this isn't just a, a simple like yes, no thing, but if you have it act on a vector, it's gonna return as many yes or no values uh, for however many elements are in that vector. Um, so let's just, uh, let me go ahead and say, so beaver1 uh, temp, or excuse me, time is what we're now doing. Um, so what we can do with if else is do something like this. We'll, we'll actually set this equal to a variable. We'll call it a uh, cond for condition, okay? This is gonna be equal to if else. And then first we put our condition. And our condi what our condition is gonna be is if uh, beaver, beaver one time is a greater than and equal to 1300. So effectively, if it would have rolled over if it were in 12 hour time. Uh, so if that is true, what we, we're gonna have it return the number negative 1200. Uh, where we're going with this, you'll see in a second. Uh, and if it's not like that, if it's not over, if it's not 1300 or over, we're gonna have it return zero, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna run this. Now, all of this function has now been, or the output of the function is now saved to the variable cond. Now I'm gonna pull this up. Now what this has done is it's gone through beaver time, as we told it to do, and it's checked if each one, it checked for each one of these values if it's above or below 1300. And if it is above, or, it, or if it's 1300 or above, it returns negative 1200, otherwise it returns zero. So we have this very nice vector here. 
Um, so you may be able to see where we're going with this now. So now what we can do is we can take, uh, so we can take beaver um, one time and we can add con to it. I was about to say subtract, but we have negative, negative numbers here. So what this is going to do is, is it's going to take each and every one of those times and add them to these. Um, so all of these 24-hour times are going to be subtracted. So let's run that. And you'll now see, actually let me move it up, you'll now see that we have all of these. So 2 p.m. is now, two, you know, it's not 1400, it's now 2. Zero, zero. Um, so if we want, we can go ahead and put this in a column in our data frame, because right near, right here we're just doing the math. Uh, but if we want to put it in our data frame, let's put it as a, you know, a, a 12 hour time or something like that. So 12 hour uh, equals beaver one time. Oh yeah, we shouldn't use, we should not use one, two. So we'll say 12. Okay, so. Yeah, you can't have variables with that in them. Um, so if we look at this now, we now see that we have 12 hour time. Actually, let's, uh, well, we, we see them up here anyway. So now we have a column in our data that has uh, time that we've manipulated with some kind of condition. Now, again, I could have just as easily replaced this actual time variable, but you know, you can do it if you want. Now, keeping other things we could do with cond, we could have it, um, or uh, if else, we could have told it to, for all of these, say that it's afternoon or something like that, or for all of these, say that it's a.m. or something like that. Um, all this kind of stuff you can play with, you don't just have to give it, let me go back to if else, you don't just have to give il, if, if else numbers, you can give it strings to put in a, a vector, you could give it uh, true or false or something like that, it depends on what you, you're actually looking for. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is all, also pretty cool. It does sort of similar idea, and that is the subset command. So subset is a very nice uh, thing. Basically what you do is you feed it data, and you feed it a condition, and it gives you all the data in that condition. It's doing something relatively similar to what if else does, um, but you know, you're not making a new vector, you're just looking at a subset of the data. Okay, so if we remind ourselves, let me look at head beaver one again. So let's see, uh, we have temperatures here. We'll look at the Celsius, just because why not? Uh, oh, no, let's look at Fahrenheit, because we made it ourselves. So let's say we have, you know, 97, we have 98. Um, we can look at, uh, let's actually look at summary, beaver one. Let's say we want to return all the uh, places where the uh, temperature is below 98 or something like that. Uh, so what we can do with the subset command is the following. First you give subset um, a uh, data frame, so beaver1, um, and then you say the condition, uh, the, like which one of those to return. So we want the ones that um, are true when beaver1 uh, f temp is uh, greater than, or let's say less than 98. I think that's what I said before. Okay, so if I run that, you'll now see that it is not, it's not just, you know, puking out random numbers, it's puking out only those observations where the F temperature, the temperature in Fahrenheit, is less than 98 degrees. So we can reverse that as well. We can say only those greater than 98, and there are actually a lot more of these. Um, but that's a way of looking at a subset of our data or something like that. Um, now we can do the same thing with time, we can do the same thing with day. So remember there are two days in our, uh, let's see, so let's say, uh, let's say we only want the observations of, oh, excuse me, we only want the observations from day 346, we can just say day is equal to 346, and we will only get those observations, not the ones after them. Or, you know, when active, so we said active is a binary variable, so we can say only those when active is true or equal to one, um, we have only those when it's equal to one or true. Um, okay, so this is just, uh, I guess sort of an entryway to messing around with data frames in R. Again, we played with subsets, we played with making if-else conditions. So this is a great way at taking your data, manipulating it. We play, we performed mathematical operations on columns, made new columns, we converted uh, an entire column to another, you know, uh, way of another 
way of looking at data. Um, so this should give you an idea of like where you can jump off for uh, in actually addressing problems in data sets in R. Uh, so we'll probably talk about some uh, classes of data uh, in R next and then maybe on to some more advanced plotting stuff. So I'll see you guys next time.